So obviously with this comic book work, I am focusing almost exclusively on black and white. And there's a specific reason is that color is, color is very, very attractive. Color is very seductive, color is very seductive and it, it entices. That's why fruit is so brightly colored because it's sweet and enticing. There's so many other things that are sweet and enticing and they're brightly colored, but probably should steer clear of them. But in regard to this has been my growing antagonism towards digital this and digital that. My, uh, my, uh, my, uh, it's, I don't want to make this sound as if I'm shaking my fist into the air. It's like this damn new technology sending everyone to hell. I don't want to sound like that, but there has to be some concessions in regard to things like CGI. Now you, you can definitely tell a movie by the period of time that its special effects were made. Uh, Battlestar Galactica, the original TV show from the 70s, you can definitely tell that that's from the 70s. And you look in regard to, to the uh, remake, there's, there's some limitations even to this, the, uh, to the, uh, the props and the special effects with the remake. You look at The Matrix, The Matrix 2 and 3, you can definitely tell that's computer generated. An awful lot of that is obviously computer generated. And you can, like the, the one where, one scene where Neo is fighting all of those Agent Smiths, you can, you can see the, the elastic nature of the, the computer generated figures. At a point in time, they just start looking fake. And that's, there are advantages to computer generated. It's quicker, it's more efficient. Imagine, imagine, so you look at the pictures of something like Aliens, the set on Aliens, or just the original one, Alien, and you look at all the, all the hard work and all the effort and all the construction of all the sets and all the design and all the effort. So you come up with an idea, then you develop a designs, and then you develop a storyboard. And the storyboard, you have to assemble a, const a construction crew, supplies, tools, and then you get down into the time it takes to make these, these props and the suits. And then you're dealing with the inherent limitations of the suits and the props, the physical limitations. How much more effort is involved? You, I've seen, you know, photography, st you know, stills of the process in shooting scenes out of Star Wars. You know, there's an awful lot of work involved. And try doing that today, I can only imagine the costs would skyrocket beyond belief. So there's a, there's a cost savings with computer generated artwork and computer generated special effects. But then again, that's, that's part of the trade-off. There is a, there is a, a depth and a solidity and a, a sense of presence that a physical model brings that CGI can sometimes fake, but 
not necessarily successfully. I'm getting off on a tangent here, but in regard to colorization of comic books, it becomes a crutch. So if you you take current day comic books and you you kind of train your eyeball to to look at the line work and not look at the color. And you you begin to see that modern day comic books of the of the the big two, Marvel and DC, they're especially from up and coming up and coming people, they just look like coloring books. It just artwork, you know, you've seen those, you've seen those, those uh, flower coloring books online sometimes. You see ads for them. You know, make these, these pretty flowers look whatever color you want. And you, you see children's coloring books still at Walmart and the likes. And you look at comic books. Comic books, do they just look like over-glorified coloring books? But they have these these awesome colors that are digitally put in place. And not to discount the, the efforts to digitally color something, you still need to understand color science, composition, and whatnot. But still, the foundation of the artwork is still going to be the line work. And if the foundation isn't that terribly great, it doesn't matter what kind of fancy color you put onto it, it's still going to be kind of crap. But color seduces, and people like colored things. And quite often, it looks like there's more effort to the color than there is to the actual line work. And this is why most of this right here is going to be black and white. You know, my lettering, my lettering sucks. I completely, completely agree that my lettering sucks, but it's my lettering. I, I have looked into, I keep bumping my head into the freaking camera, I have looked into, you know, lettering on the computer, and it's just like, nah. And I'm not saying that Color, coloring shouldn't be digital, and I'm not outraging against CGI. Is it's again, it's a matter of convenience. Sometimes, because it's convenient, doesn't mean it's better. Because it's cheaper, doesn't mean it's better. the The effort that you're saving and the costs that you're saving should go into better story. And I'm not, I don't see that very often in modern movies. The, it just, it doesn't translate into, into a better product overall. It's a flashier product. It becomes more disposable. Because it's, it's less expensive to produce, people are going to produce more of it. And it just becomes cheap garbage. And it's just, I don't know. My 
my that I suppose that's what I'm getting at in regard to this ramble is to not make something like computer computer aided systems to be something you rely on if the computer goes away tomorrow what are you going to do are you so dependent on it that you can't use it that you can't do anything Are you going to be so dependent on it that you become helpless, crippled, unable to function without it? And I can, I can cede my limitations on dealing with computers, but then again, my computers are, I think in the grand scheme of things, my computers are about as equal to a stone tablet as anything else due to their age. I'll, I'll use an example. I'm, I'm, I'm always, always been a kind of a car nut. Always have been. I'll use this as an example. So, you have something like a big, expensive Bugatti, which is basically an overglorified Volkswagen, and it's big and it's fast and it's expensive and it's crazy and it's absurd and it's bonkers and it's loud and obnoxious and colorful and bright and probably more than likely designed by a computer. And it's ridiculously expensive. It's a big, huge status symbol. And then there's a company called Persang out of Argentina. They make Bugattis too, but they make them all by hand. And that seems kind of like, well, that's crazy. It is, because it's a Bugatti from the 1920s. And it's a perfect, a perfect distillation of the difference between CGI and non-CGI. Is you have this completely hand-built car that's from the 1920s. It's got cable-operated brakes. And it's got basically bicycle tires for for wheels because, you know, 1920s, no ABS, no traction control, bare bones and minimalistic as opposed to something that's got multi-processor fuel injection, all-wheel drive, all the gadgets and gizmos that modern society flourishes on. But they have different purposes. They still accomplish their function. Anyway, that's all I have for that ramble. I, I'm just, I'm just wary of people being overly reliant on something that becomes easy. 
convenience after after a certain point convenience ends up becoming poison it becomes it becomes uh destructive take it take it with this so you know when people go up to the space station and they hang out in the space station for a while when they come back they look all exhausted and dejected and just kind of fried and burned out. Well, that's because they're not suffering from the effects of gravity. And so their muscles kind of atrophy and their bones kind of kind of weaken because they're not pushing against gravity. And if you don't have something to push against, some effort, you kind of weaken yourself. So just be wary about reliance on something that could potentially weaken your artistic efforts. Anyway, that's all I got. See ya.